This ceremony marked the end of an era. The crowd knew it. No quiet, nostalgic mood. The guest of honor was retiring from naval aviation today. After more than 20 years of distinguished service, the old warrior of countless skies was being given a final tribute and a last farewell. But the honored guest today was not a fighting man of the United States Navy. It was an airplane, not an ordinary plane, but a magnificent aircraft that had served our nation in peace and war for a record-breaking two decades. The officers and men gathered here are saying goodbye to an old friend, the last Sky Raider in Navy service. The sturdy, prop-driven attack bomber, affectionately known as a SPAD, was about to be piped over for the flight to its final destination, the Naval Aviation Museum at Pensacola, Florida. The story of the Sky Raider began in our nation's capital in 1944. The Second Great War was coming to an end, closing the book on the most extensive campaign of all time by carrier-borne aircraft. Up to that time, the Douglas Dauntless, designated the SBD, had been and in fact still was the Navy's foremost attack aircraft. But the war in the Pacific had changed so much that the need for a new attack bomber was becoming evident. Three top Douglas engineers attended a meeting in Washington where they learned two things. First, all further modifications on the SBD were canceled. Second, they discovered two other companies had been asked to submit proposals for a new attack aircraft. The Douglas engineers went to their hotel and worked through the night on preliminary sketches of the new Sky Raider. The following morning was the deadline for any consideration. The sketches intrigued the Navy enough that Douglas was allowed to enter the competition and eventually was awarded the contract. In nine short months, the Sky Raider evolved from lines on a blueprint to a plane. Early in March 1945, the prototype was test flown. From the first moment, the Navy knew they had a winner. What they had no way of knowing at that time was that they had a champion. The Navy had been searching for a new dive bomber, attack aircraft, to meet the changing tactical and operational requirements. The Sky Raider gave them all that and much more. Within the span of the next 12 years, Douglas Aircraft Company was to manufacture 3,180 Sky Raiders in seven versions and 28 subversions. January 1948, the USS Coral Sea embarked on her maiden voyage. first launch and recovery ever attempted from the flight deck of the newly christened carrier was accomplished by a sky ring. It was only fitting and proper for the Sky Raider to join the Coral Sea as she sailed for the first time. For, as fate would ordain some 20 years later, the same carrier and the very same squadron would witness the last combat cruise of the Never Say Die Sky Raiders. But before that day was to arrive, the Sky Raider proved to be the muscle in the Navy's air arm. She earned her nickname, the Pedigreed Pulverizer, as the Sky Raider served with distinction in two major wars.
striking with deadly payloads from the carrier USS Valley Forge. Sky Raiders blasted targets in Korea on July 3rd, 1950, just three days after the start of the United Nations action. From then on, hardly a day passed that Sky Raiders didn't strike. Since the Korean War, Sky Raider squadrons on board America's 15 attack carriers have been on the line ready to perform in every Cold War situation where naval power has been brought to bear. Lebanon, Suez, Matsu, Quemoy, the Dominican Republic, Cuba, and Vietnam. During this period, the old Sky Raider managed to stay on the varsity while well, five different types of jet attack aircraft have made the team, been benched, and eventually have had their numbers retired from the carrier aircraft inventory. The Sky Raiders' longevity on the first team of strike aircraft is tacit acknowledgement of her outstanding performance over the years. Above all, the Sky Raider was versatile equipped to perform four major missions, day attack, all-weather attack, airborne early warning, and countermeasures. Some versions of the Sky Raiders could, however, through flight deck adaptation kits, convert into a VIP or high-density passenger aircraft, or an ambulance, or cargo plane, or an anti-submarine search craft, a target tow and even a tanker. In her primary role of attack aircraft, the spectrum of usable weapons ranges from torpedoes to rockets, to cannons, to bullets, to bombs, including nuclear weapons. A single Sky Raider is a half dozen airstrikes all by itself. The Sky Raider demonstrated that it was the first plane capable of carrying greater than its own structural weight in armament. After more than 20 years, the huge old bird saw its last combat action in Vietnam. There came that inevitable moment when it was the last battle and the last war for the Sky Raider. When that final battle was over, the proud old Navy fighting bird folded her wings and called it a day. She came home from Vietnam in style. Like most great planes, the Sky Raider was created out of need and necessity. But even her most ardent supporters in the 40s never dreamed the SPAD would be around to celebrate her 20th operational birthday. Combat aircraft just don't stay around that long, very often. Yet, more than two decades have gone by since she sailed on the maiden voyage of the USS Coral Sea. Now the old Sky Raider was coming home from her final cruise with the same squadron and aboard the same carrier. Now that final moment was at hand. Bureau number 35300 taxied past the side boys. The crowd stood at attention. And the last Navy Sky Raider was formally piped over. The heroic memory of the Sky Raider will long be recalled and relived in the hearts and minds of the fighting men of the United States Navy.